There we go. Can you hear my voice clearly? Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. And yes, Pastor Gyro, I do hear your voice. And welcome, welcome, welcome Pastor Gyro. Welcome to all who have tuned in today. And please take a quick moment to share this broadcast as together we can reach more people. So please press that little share button, whether you're watching on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Telegram, or on Rumble, or of course on our webpage. Wherever you are watching us, please take a quick moment. It just takes a second. Press share. And it's a way of evangelizing because we're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ here. It's a way of opening up conversation with your neighbors, your friends about Jesus Christ. And it is a wonderful place for us to gather, to pray together yes. for America, for Canada, for other nations of the world, and of course, for needs of those who write in. So thank you for joining us, and welcome again to Prayer for America and the Nations. My name is Walter Zagarevich with Global Vision Ministries, and we're on here Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast time. And today we have the pleasure of having with us, as a guest, Pastor Jairo Leandro from the great city of Bonneville, Alberta, <laughs> Canada. Welcome, Pastor Gyro. Thank you, Walter. Glad to be with you again. And uh, from time to time, I watch the different videos you put out. And uh, glad to hear also the voices of some of our, you know, collaborators uh, work with you and uh, Ukraine and Russia and where you take the gospel, and especially now in Ukraine, where you're reaching out. So it's good to see some of the faces that I haven't seen in person for a long time. So glad to be here with you and to cooperate in praying for our nations and the world, because we know Jesus is coming soon. With all that is happening, it kind of gives us a great understanding of how quickly that day is approaching us. So praise the Lord. Glad to be with you, Walter. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Gyro. It's always wonderful to have you on here. It's Thanks. an honor to have you on here. And uh, one thing I appreciate about you, Pastor Gyro, is your sincerity and your heart for missions. And Amen. I believe a heart for missions is the heart of the Lord, because that is where God's heart is, to evangelize this world and bring people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior. Amen. And we've got a lot of work to do, but as you said, the coming of the Lord is approaching, and we want to do everything we possibly can to get the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone in every corner of this uh, of the world. But thank you, Pastor Gyro, and thank you for being on here. Uh, we've uh, been talking much about Ukraine on this broadcast, and yes. when I, um, Brother Albert, and Pastor Igor, uh, who's a pilot and a pastor, uh, going with us, we are looking forward to a wonderful time with pastors from Frontline Zones that we are hosting for a retreat and to give them a break from the war, but also to encourage yeah. them, to pray with them and for them. We did this mm -hmm. last October, and it was such a blessing to them and to us to be able to yes. see them in person, to be with them. We're always in contact with them, but to see them in person, it makes a difference. And so we're looking very much yes. forward to that. While there, we've got other ministry lined up as well. And uh, so, so we're just looking forward to what God is, is doing. And uh, I believe that uh, you know, we see sometimes the microcosm of what is happening here or there, but the big picture, Pastor Gyro, is that God is saving many people in the Amen. midst of tragedy, in the midst of the horrific war, and all the bad things that have happened and are happening. There are good things that are happening. People are being saved. The gospel Amen. is Preach. The unchurched are coming to church, many of them for the first time. 
personally, perhaps because they wanted to get bread, you know, physical bread and food now coming because they've tasted of the bread of life as so coming to hear God's word, to know more about God. And many of them are committing their lives to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Whatever it takes to awaken men to righteousness to their need of the Lord. And sad to say, sometimes it's tragic things like these. But uh, when they know they have nowhere else to turn and they can only look to heaven. Uh, so that which was meant for evil turns to good for them. And uh, we pray that God will indeed, you know, cause this war to cease and to help the people that have been, you know, traumatized by it. But at the same time, as you say, there are those who see that this is kind of God's call to them to run for refuge into the Savior. So we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. And it's happening not just in Ukraine, but it's happening amongst Ukrainian and Russians that have fled yeah. the uh, 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 both Ukraine and Russia, because we talk a lot about the Ukrainians that have fled, and there are millions of them. Uh, yeah. Some statistics say 5 million. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but uh, just Poland alone had 3 million. I'm not sure if that mm -hmm. may still be the case, maybe down to 2 million because many have moved on to other nations. But uh, uh, what is happening is that among those who were not Christians but ended up refugees, they also are finding uh, in looking for connection with other people from their nations, many of them are finding churches where they are connecting and they are getting to know Christ as a savior outside of their surroundings, yeah. outside of their comfort zone. And you know what? That is also happening with uh, people from Russia. We saw that in Dubai. Uh, pastor friend there is reaching yeah. out. There are 2 million Russian speakers in Dubai right now. Wow. And uh, so, you know, some people left Russia because, uh, of, of course, because of the war. Some don't, uh, are not in agreement with us. Some, uh, for various reasons related to the war, um, people have left and uh, they are in surroundings that are unfamiliar to them. And that causes them to seek some familiarity, someone yeah. maybe that shares the culture or the language. And it is wonderful when there is a church a gospel preaching yeah. church where they can find that connection and not just that connection, but come to know Jesus Christ as a savior. So um, the other thing that's happening is the refugees who are believers are affecting churches in other nations yeah. as, uh, in Europe. Uh, we've seen that in Poland, in Germany, in other parts of Europe where pastors are telling us their churches are being revived by the presence of these on fire believers from uh, from Ukraine. So many things are happening. And, and, and so uh, we pray the war stops. And as soon as that war stops, Brother Jairo, there's going to be so much work there. Uh, and I don't mean just yes. rebuilding physically, but rebuilding lives, ministering the gospel, helping churches there, training more leaders because Pastors are shorthanded there right now. They're yes. overwhelmed with so many people coming to their churches. And as you and I are discussing, these are unchurched people. This is not yes. like a bunch of Christians that moved from another church. There are a few of those because they moved from one area to another because of uh, safety reasons within the country. But mm -hmm. mostly these people are unchurched people. And um, I mean, they have interesting questions. One of the pastors said, they yes. asked, why don't you have a beard? Well, you would be okay there. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> they're used to seeing a priest with a beard. So they asked the pastor, yes. don't have a beard. why don't you have a beard? Or why don't I see icons or, you know, images on yes. the walls in your church? You know, because they're unfamiliar. And of course, it's an opportunity to share the truth of the gospel. And, um, and I think you can, you can understand these things. That's right. Indeed. Yeah, there are so many people that, uh, you know, they have their traditional religion, 
And even if they don't attend church, as I've witnessed being there, whether it be in Russia or Ukraine, where, you know, they say I am of this or that faith. But in reality, when you go into the church buildings, you do not see them present. Yeah. And so, yeah, now that they turn to the church, whether it be initially for the food or the help, uh, they come into the worship service and it's an educational thing for them. They see the incredible differences in that which at least they imagine would be what should be seen or heard in the church. And yeah. they find that uh, the churches, whether they be Baptist or Pentecostal, evangelical churches, there's very much in a live service with people participating, whether it be choirs or bands or testimonies. And so, yeah, I'm sure that they have a lot of questions <laughs> about why do you do this or why you don't do that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's an incredible time to be living because people are filled with questions, especially mm -hmm. about the end times. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And um, uh, the wonderful thing is that they are hearing the gospel and yeah. uh, people that uh, would never have set foot in a, a Bible preaching, you know, like you said, evangelical church yeah. are stepping through the doors of those churches and not by force, but by their own volition and and continue to come and come on a regular basis. And um, uh, Bishop Vasily, for example, in uh, Zaporizhia, um, yeah. he ended up with about 120, 140 people because the others left. Um, but he, uh, he now, uh, he was running two services with 500, over 500 people each, and he's added uh, or adding a third service because there are hundreds waiting outside yes. in each of the other two services wanting to get in. So uh, this, is, this is just the hunger that there is in people's hearts. And um, I spoke with uh, Bishop Vitali in Kharkiv. He said, you know, in their situation, thankfully, uh, most of their staff or their leadership team, they stayed. And so he is thankful. He's got leaders yes. that are there working with him because they've got, they're running about 1,400 people on Sundays there, plus all of the activities. See, there's, there's prayer meetings going on every day, and different people come to different ones of these prayer meetings. So it's you know, obviously you've got to attend to people and yeah. pray with them and help them. And so, and plus all the social work. So it is just, um, uh, it is amazing to see how God is working in the midst of all of that. Yes, it's amazing that uh, there are those, of course, who have come into the church, like in Zaporizhia, you know, and I've been there several times with you and uh, to see that kind of a crowd gathering now in a very difficult time is incredibly encouraging. Not only, of course, for the local believers, but uh, as other believers hear about it, right? That people are yeah. coming in, the place is being packed out. And uh, we're so glad that uh, we see that. And of course, not only in Zaporizhia and other places, oh, yes. and Kharkov, as you've seen yes. uh, and uh, have been there so many times, but thank the Lord for that because they carry on that work that is crucial Amen. and uh, that they need to be around for because, you know, unbelievers, uh, they're not all leaving the city. And so they need somebody to turn to for answers, for help, for prayer, indeed, yes. and for the hearing of the gospel. So thank the Lord for those pastors and their staff, and may God bless them and may their tribe increase, indeed. Yes, amen. And um, and it's not only the churches we mentioned, as you said. Yes. Uh, uh, Bishop Andres Church in uh, uh, Zaporizhia, he's had to uh, go to two services uh, packed out and mm -hmm. uh, other churches as well. Yeah, in uh, in in um, Kras, uh, used to be Kasar Bis, it's called Pokros now, where mm -hmm. Bishop Anatoly is, where we had our school on numerous yes. Um, he was left with maybe 20 people and they're wow. running they're running over 200 um so you know uh it's 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 an amazing thing uh, to see people coming seeking yeah. god 
And, and and he's the one that told me, you know, people are asking, why don't you have a beard? Because he doesn't have one. I guess he should, <laughs> he should get, take your example. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 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 Brother Gyro, God is working. Um, and, um, so as we look at the news, um, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, what's happening in America or Canada uh, yeah. in in, in many countries of the world, we can sure uh, be down and, and, and our spirits could just sink because you know, of the evil, uh, because of so many bad things happening. But we need to, I believe, keep focusing on the Lord and keep our eyes on the ball, keep our yeah. eyes on the task, which is evangelism. And in the midst of all these things, I mean, you are originally from Brazil, and yeah. you know how in Brazil you've got the uh, so many churches, and yet you also have the other extreme. You've got yes. carnival crowds. You've got all of that. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, well, Brazil, as you know, right, uh, Billy Graham said of them when they packed out back in the days right in the 70s and 80s Billy Graham would do these crusades and they would pack out Maracanã Stadium the largest soccer stadium in the world at the time and they would ask him right the reporters these are secular people how is it that you can actually bring so many people together into here the world's largest stadium and Billy Graham said it's because Brazilians all think that they're evangelists Right. So that is, of course, a tongue in cheek comment that the Brazilian people themselves look to reach to their neighbors and look to propagate the gospel and to share the good news. And so thankfully, that is still going on. And so the Brazilian people are suffering, of course, as you know, they have chosen a government, uh, you know, from the other side of the scale that uh, is anti-God and is aligning itself with nations that are anti-God. And so the people suffer as a result of that. That is financially, to be sure. Uh, But the churches are growing, and people are reaching out, and young people getting involved in some innovative ways of preaching the gospel and reaching out to the unchurched masses. Uh, But the fact of the matter is, today, as unlike decades past, Brazil is sending missionaries all over the world. And it's about time to be sure it's the largest or second largest Pentecostal body on the planet. I believe the church in Indonesia is just as big with over 25 million Pentecostals. And that's just the Pentecostals, right? So they are reaching out, they are sending missionaries. And and that has brought the people actually literally, as you might have seen some videos, uh, to their knees on the streets of, of, uh, of uh, Brazil's uh, large cities, where people are unabashedly, unashamedly, just kneeling on the streets and calling out to God. So there's a way in which God works in the travesty that takes place in places where, whether it be natural disasters or war, uh, or governments that have gone rogue, and the, and the people turn to God. And so we thank God for that. And uh, as difficult as it is to watch them suffer these things, and in some cases, casualty, other places, indignities, uh, at the same time, we're thankful that God uses these things to draw people to himself. And his promise to us is, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And they need Jesus now than ever before. So thank God for what's happening there uh, in -hmm. Brazil. I myself haven't haven't visited there in many years now. Uh, 2014 was the last time I was there. But I have many friends in ministry there and, and, and people in the family who minister there. And I thank God. The work still carries on. It has not waned. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. And we too have friends and uh, we, yes. we, we are there and we have, I think we've been there since you had been there. We have. Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, but we, yeah. uh, we are, but we, uh, what you have said is uh, absolutely right. And you know, it couldn't have been said better. Uh, Pastor Gyro, we are also praying for Canada. And yes. 
Canada as America. Um, you know, we say America, but really either you have North America, South America, or the yeah. United States and Canada both need revival. And, and we want to include that in prayer, but I know that you have something to share with us and we don't, uh, I don't want to minimize your time. So please share what's on your heart. And we do, and if you want to talk about Canada, that's fine. Yeah, but we do want to pray for Canada uh, on this broadcast. Uh, we, we often pray for America and we often pray for Canada, yes. but we want to include that specifically today. Uh, but go ahead, uh, Brother Gyro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Walter, just on the uh, kind of secular side of things, I don't know if you heard it or not, but what's been making news this week here in Canada is that Canada has signed, right, a deal with Volkswagen in Germany uh, to build batteries here uh, in Canada, is, uh, specifically in the province of Quebec. Uh, and it's a huge contract. The government actually gave Volkswagen or will give in total $13 billion to build here a factory that will be one of the largest factories in the world, actually, covers over 15,000 acres, just to give you an idea of the size of this thing, because the lithium that is mined in Quebec is the only place in Canada that has it, and it is one of the biggest suppliers in the world, and so Volkswagen has done that, and of course, as everywhere else, what we have is a shortage of workers. Now, this kind of ties in with what's happening in Ukraine and other places where people are displaced, uh, either by natural disasters or war, uh, that those people actually can and will be able to find employment on the shores of Canada, as it were, because we do not have the population base for that kind of supply of workers. So that is a positive. They come for employment, they come for opportunities, but then they come to a land where there is still freedom to preach the gospel. There are churches everywhere. And so our prayer is that God will use even the industrial uh, sphere of life in Canada as a means to draw people here where they may hear the gospel freely and be able to live in peace. So that bit of information uh, is good, especially for the large segments of uh, people who come into the country as immigrants. So they come to us if we don't go to them, you know, and so uh, we pray that that will turn into a blessing for Canada. And the, the Canadian situation now, as you know, as is in America, quite dire in terms of our leadership, because uh, we are living in that day where the spirit of the age has taken a grip of many institutions in the nation, and the uh, people are forced to swallow, as it were, uh, ideologies and belief systems and accept them as if they were the norm. So Canada needs a revival. Like the U.S., this is a nation founded on godly principles and a foundation that's scriptural, as there is evidence for it in our government buildings in Ottawa, where scripture is quoted and inscribed in the concrete that makes up some of that building structure. So we do need, indeed, and especially in Alberta, by the way, to keep in mind for prayer at the end of May, we are having an election in our province for a new premier, the equivalent of a governor in America. And uh, this is going to be a very heated race between left and right uh, political players. And so we need, as the Bible says, righteousness to exalt this nation. So we would appreciate our friends' prayers as they listen to this broadcast for the election taking place in Alberta in about a month's time. And this will be crucial because it'll set the course for this province, which has been an incredible boom for the rest of the nation. We transfer monies, unlike in the US, from our provinces to the capital to redistribute it to the what we may consider the have not provinces. And Alberta is a beast of burden. It has done more than any other province in transferring funds to help those across the nation 
who need a hand up. And so please pray for Alberta. We are in dire straits of God's help, especially during these next few weeks as we kind of ramp up for the elections. Why don't we stop and do that right now, Pastor? Sure. Uh, would you lead us in that prayer, please? Yes, yes. Father, we thank you and praise you for the freedom that we do have in this part of the world. Lord God, we are so blessed by your hand upon our nations for what you have allowed us, Lord, to inherit from those who came before us. And we are most thankful for them and for the heritage that they leave behind. It is ours now to carry on. And Father, your word says that righteousness exalts a nation, but that sin is a reproach to any people. And so we pray for the province of Alberta in particular at this moment, for the elections that are up and coming in a few weeks. We pray, Father, that your will would be done, that you would put in place those who honor your word, who believe that people have a right to those con constitutional freedoms that have been entrusted to them. And may we be wise stewards of those rights, O Lord God, and privileges that are ours as a free nation. We pray also for the country as a whole, for every leader in every province and every municipality in our federal offices, Father, that you would help them to do what is right for the people of this country. Thank you that Canada has opened up its arms and borders to take in those who suffer, oh Lord God, from casualties and disasters and wars. And we thank you for bringing them into our nation. And may we as believers take this opportunity to encourage those people to seek the Lord. And may we be bold as lions to share our faith, to share the good news, to be a help to our neighbors, to help them settle into this nation and accept all the good that it offers with thankfulness. So Father, we pray in Jesus' name, even for the strife that is even right now happening across the nation with over 150,000 government workers on the streets asking for their rights and the government and the chiefs, oh Lord, that will sit down, the principal players, that Lord, that which is equitable, that which is right, that which is just, would be meted out, put into law, so people can get back to their jobs to service the nation in those many needs that, Lord, they are up front and center involved in. So we thank you for Canada. We ask in Jesus' name that this nation may exalt the name of Jesus, may take advantage of the freedom that comes from the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Lord, we bless the nation of Canada. We thank, yes, thank you, Lord. How that you have used this nation to have sent missionaries around the world. Yes. Touching Hallelujah. lives in so many nations. And Father, we pray that uh, you yes. would return back to Canada that blessing. Grand that they've sown in other nations, may they yes. those blessings now. And Lord, with a visitation of your Holy Spirit, touching Amen. lives, drawing people back to yourself, filling up churches and yes. touching many, many lives in Thank Jesus' you, Lord. name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. We are going to continue to pray. For Canada, yeah. uh, one of the nations that we are also praying for is uh, Taiwan. I call it a nation, the basic yes. facto nation, um, even though it's not recognized as such by many people. But uh, they are in need. And when I pray for Canada, I remember the fact that they're one of the a friend who was a missionary from Canada. He's now passed on to be with the Lord, has spent many, many years there in Taiwan. He's also helped us and ministered in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, Brother Nick Krasnitsky, he's passed on to yeah. be with the Lord, but his church and his legacy lives on. His family's carrying on the great work uh, there in not only in Taipei, but throughout Taiwan, um, Elam Christian Center, 
and um, uh, his wife is now the pastor there. It is a wonderful work, but they are asking us for prayer. They're asking because the situation is, uh, in some ways, has similarities to Ukraine, and so they very much are praying for Ukraine, and they understand their situation because there are similarities to their situation vis-a-vis uh, China, uh, or mainland China, I should say, because Taiwan is called the Republic of China, whereas the, uh, the mainland is called the uh, uh, People's Republic of China. So we want to lift that up, and perhaps, uh, Pastor Jairo, we could do that right sure. now uh, before you share. I, I just wanted to do that. Um, uh, uh, when we pray for Canada, I remember them because they also are connected to Canada. Yes. Uh, it's missionaries from Canada that, that went there and have done this great work. And let me tell you, he had, uh, Brother Nick had this uh, uh, this desire, and he was able to fulfill before he went to the presence of the Lord, as was to reach every home on that island with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they were able to complete it. So they just continually just kept going and going, visiting every house on that island with teams, getting the gospel message to them. Uh, an amazing, amazing uh, uh, legacy of, of truly uh, a mission, a true missionary. Let wow. me tell you, that take a whole island and, and, and go to every home in that island with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he affected many university students, starting a campus church there, uh, teaching also the university, reaching many young people, so many things. And uh, his family's continuing very active in the ministry for which we are thankful, but they need prayer. And would you lead us in prayer uh, for sure. them? Yes, Father, we come to you again on behalf of Taiwan. We pray in Jesus' name that your will would be carried out among its citizens. I thank you, Father, for so many that are there, expats from other nations, who are actually, Father, using their time among those people to reach them with the gospel. We thank you for this church, for its elders that are working, O oh Lord God, to make the name of Jesus famous in Taiwan. We pray for the general population in light of all that's happening today in the world. There is reason for anxiety if you don't know Jesus, reason for concern and worry in many parts because of what may be happening in the days to come. Father, I pray that those who now feel the uh, point of the spear, as it were, in making decisions as to which way to turn, that they would remember the words of those who knocked on their doors, or the gospel tracts that were put in their hands, or the scriptures that they have possession of, that they would turn to that, that they would meditate upon that, that they would call upon the name of the Lord for what you did for Nineveh. You can do for for any nation state today, Lord God, you can bring them out of a state of stupor spiritually and revive them, oh Lord God, awaken their conscience to righteousness, to that which is right and good before you. So we pray for the leaders, the government, oh Lord God, that they would do that which is wise and good for their citizens. We pray in Jesus' name that you would break the back of the enemy's evil plans, Lord God, that you would send confusion into their councils that they may not be able to bring upon the free people, Lord God, their force and their will, but that you would help the church in Taiwan, Lord God, spread across that nation state, that you would, Father God, raise them up to be voices of hope and voices of reason, voices of good news, that you would bless those people with the hearing of the gospel, and that you would be pleased to save many through the preaching of the word, through the light that the church shines, the salt that they are in their society, in their culture, Lord God, among their neighbors and fellow students and fellow workers. May your spirit lead them and open doors that cannot be shut. And Father, in Jesus' name, protect them and provide for them as they choose to do what's right and honoring to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Amen. And likewise, Father, we lift up the church yes. in uh, uh, in uh, Hong Kong. Lord, we know yes. that come under more restrictive situations now. And Lord, we pray yeah. that you would encourage them, that you would protect them, that yes, free Lord. continue there for the preaching of the gospel. And Father, we pray for a mighty move of God in the mainland of China. Yes, thank the, you. From the east to the west, Lord, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done in that great nation. And Father, yes. we pray that the knowledge of the name of Jesus Christ would spread like wildfire throughout Amen. that nation. For Lord, we know that in the midst of persecution, the church has grown, and we thank you for that growth that will continue to just permeate every area, not only every region, but Lord, also the spheres of influence uh, in education, yes. in government, in business, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Gyro, I, I keep saying we want to hear from you, and <laughs> <laughs> but please. Well, you know, uh, Walter, I was just uh, in my devotionals uh, this morning. You know, the story of that widow of name that uh, Jesus met as they came through the gates of that city, going to the sepulcher to bury her son. And, uh, you know, it's interesting in that story that Jesus had traveled 25 miles that day to arrive in Maine at evening. And it just so happens coincidentally, uh, but here Jesus and that entourage of mourners with that widow, they meet just outside the gates of the city of Nain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus knew in his heart that widow's situation. He understood her crisis. He understood her pain her loneliness, and the fact that her future, which was wrapped up as is also the custom of that part of the world, it was wrapped up in her son, who would be a companion for her because her husband had passed, who would be, you know, a financial security for her. And Jesus, the word of God says, had compassion on her. And he said to her, do not worry. And he speaks then the next words to the son on that buyer. And he says, young man, I command you arise. And that young man comes to life. And, you know, I think of those in Ukraine and other parts of the world in Yemen uh, who are experiencing some of the same things in Sudan now. And, you know, there are so many that are whittled. Mother's Day is going to be upon us here in about three weeks. And uh, sometimes we forget when we think of mothers that a widow is also possibly a mother. And their situation is dire, especially in these days when there's so much of the world that lives in poverty. And those mothers that have become widows are so dependent on those children that today are going off to war, that are being, uh, you know, slaughtered and raided in their villages as it pertains to different areas of the world, whether it be in Yemen or Sudan, or whether it be, you know, in Ukraine and the war. And those are not coming back. But that story gives us hope that, see, Jesus knows the timing is not coincidental. It is actually in the plan of God that he comes upon their situation. He comes upon their destitution at the right time. I'm sure that that mother, along with those who were mourners in that procession, had no idea what Jesus was about to do. But he stops the bearers of that buyer just stood still, not really knowing what Jesus was about to do. And you can imagine, she knew that there was no more hope. She knew her son was dead. She knew that the jaws of the sepulcher were just a few hundred yards away where they would lay her son to rest. She knew all that. Little did she know, though, that that very day, her desperation would turn to joy 
as her son would embrace her, as Jesus would bring him back to life. And so our God, as the word says, Paul speaks and is able to do exceeding abundantly and above what we ask or think. His spirit lives in us. Praise God for that. So here is this young man who hears the voice of Jesus. He speaks particularly to that young man. And he says, arise. And the young man comes back to life. You know, it's not only the widows that lose such precious lives who really hold their future in terms of, you know, helping them to live out their days, support them. But there are many mothers, there are many who almost like widows mourn sons and daughters who are dead spiritually, where there is no collaboration and they're coming together and worshiping God in church or praying together at home or where they can draw encouragement from because they live on a different plane. They don't have the same spiritual sensitivity to things that are eternal, but they live in a world of the ephemeral, the things that are passing. And so those mothers carry a heavy burden also, because what person, what mother, what father would want to live their lives in the expectation of a son or a daughter who will pass from the scene and never see the face of Jesus? who cries out to them, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. The one who invites them to come, as Isaiah said, let us reason together, who is able to forgive their sins and to change their lives. The very one at the end of the book who says, come, the spirit and the bride say, come, take freely of the waters of life. And so for those mothers in particular, because they are most affected by it. In the coming couple or three weeks, as we look to Mother's Day, we may look to include those also in our prayers, because they have sons or daughter, maybe a son or daughter, or all of their children who do not have life spiritually, who do not have the hope of seeing the face of God. And so as I was meditating on that this morning, I'm thinking of those very mothers in Ukraine whose sons are never coming home and some of them daughters who are never going to come home. And I pray in Jesus name that we would continue to remember them in prayer and then that they may have the joy of that widow of Nain that their children would come face to face at God's appointed time to turn from death to life, that they would not head into the jaws of the sepulcher without Jesus, but that they would come to know him in the fullness of his power. So that's a group of people also, mothers whose children are never coming back to them or whose children are strayed from God that we can pray for and say, as the old song you know well, come home, come home. The shadows lengthen fast. Amen. Amen. Pastor Gyro, can we stop and pray yes. for those mothers, for those widows, for yes. those who, who truly God is their, their husband, you may say, yes. in this hour. And, and, and it is true in Ukraine, it is true in other parts of the world where mothers have uh, lost uh, their sons, their husbands, uh, yeah. uh, children have lost their fathers. So there are widows and there are orphans. And yeah. you are absolutely right. We celebrate Mother's Day and um, we need to remember those mothers who are widows uh, and those who may also uh, um, have have no living children because of right. circumstances, because of what had transpired. But as you also mentioned, there are those and many, and people write us, and people ask for prayer for their children, that yeah. they would come to Jesus Christ. And we want to pray for those uh, children that they truly, they may not be dead physically, but certainly right. they're dead spiritually. And we want to see them come alive in Jesus Christ. Pastor yeah. Gyro, can you pray for those uh, 
mothers, those children, those orphans and widows, and mothers in general, um, please. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you with thanksgivings, for we have received the good news, and you have caused faith to arise in our hearts to believe it, to accept it, and to trust Jesus who died for us to forgive us our sins and to bring us into your family so that there we are nurtured by your spirit. We are nurtured by your word. We are nurtured by the fellowship of those who believe as we do, that you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that our sins are forgiven in you through your shed blood. And father, there are so many who do not have children who believe and they mourn much like that widow of Nain. They cry out for your salvation to come, O Lord God, and rescue their sons and their daughters who are unbelieving. And I pray and I join my hearts with them, Lord God, that you would do that which only you can do, for we cannot save, but we can call upon the Savior. We can point them to the rescuer of life life himself, Jesus, the righteous one. And so we pray for parents who are bereaved of their children's spiritual attachment to you, that they would come to know you and to be saved in Jesus name. And Father, we pray also for those who are widows indeed, who have lost their children, their husbands. The Lord God, I pray that you would heal their hurts and their hearts, that you would speak peace into their souls, that you would cause them to seek your face, to rely on you, to depend upon you, and to ultimately trust you, to deliver them, O oh Lord God, from the straits of life that have squeezed them in, have robbed them of their joy. In Jesus' name, let not death have victory over them, but that they may, O oh Lord God, rejoice and ask as did the Apostle Paul, oh, death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. I pray for, Lord, the widows and, Father, for husbands and wives also bereaved of their children in droughts and famines and in floods and in war in Jesus' name. In sickness, some have lost their loved ones. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would see them because, indeed, you did promise to be a father to the orphans, a husband to the widows, and you are the hope of the sojourner and the strength, the weak, and those who are oppressed, and those, oh Lord God, who are marginalized. And so we pray as they cry out to you and lift their voices to you, that you would hear them, oh Lord God, and rescue them. And may we, the church, the arms and hands of Jesus extended the world over, take note of them and do what we can for them, that they may come to know Jesus, the giver of life. We ask this in his holy name. Amen. 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 Pastor Jairo, there may have been uh, maybe someone who tuned in who doesn't know Christ yet as yes. their Savior. Would you invite him to receive Jesus and lead him in a prayer? Amen. Amen. And there are many like that. Nice. So let's pray together. And if this is you, if you've been hearing, and, and maybe you're that son or daughter, that's wayward. And you know that mom or dad or your family, the church you once attended is praying for you. And maybe you never had a church and you know about Jesus and you want to receive him as both Lord and Savior. He is willing to take you in. His word says, all who come to me, I will in no wise cast out. So let's pray together and let's ask the Lord, if you will to come into your heart and rule in your life. Father, I thank you for every listener to this podcast or this audio version of our conversation. Lord, you are willing that all should come to repentance and that none should perish without you. And so, Lord, you know the hearts of those who cry out to you this moment. And I pray that you would hear their prayer and that you would receive them as sons and daughters who put their trust in you. And I pray, dear friend, that if this is your desire, 
just pray with me this simple prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I give you my heart. Yeah. I trust you for salvation. I know that I have turned my back on you, that I have not obeyed you, but it is my desire to give you my life, to walk in your ways. Save me as I give you my heart and life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Pastor Jairo. And if you have prayed that prayer, sincerely, Christ has heard that prayer. He's coming amen. into life, forgiving your sins. Do three things each day. Talk to him. We call it prayer, but it's conversation with God. Just talk to him like with a yes. friend. Let him talk to you. Read his word, the Bible. Amen. You don't know where to start. A good place I recommend is go to the gospel according to St. John, the fourth book yes. in the New Testament. Good place to start to learn more about the love of Jesus. And thirdly, talk to others about him. Let Amen. them know that you are now a follower yes. of Jesus. And something very, very important, find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church like Pastor Jairus, yes. where you can grow in your faith. Yes. It's very important to have fellowship yes. with other believers. It's important to get teaching from God's Word. So find a Bible-preaching, Bible, -preaching Bible uh, church where you yes. grow in your faith. Uh, Praise God. Uh, Pastor Jairo, we, um, uh, we want to pray for needs. There are people that tune in and people that write in. Uh, and I'm not going to mention by name because I may forget someone, but people have and do write in from different parts of the world. And there are, there, they are various needs. Some are of healing. Some are for the yeah of their loved one. Some are for, uh, for a breakthrough in their financial situation. Some are from pastors who, uh, uh, who are doing certain things that are, uh, you know, building a Bible school or, or getting uh, uh, something off, starting a new church, doing things in the ministry, and they need strength. They need God's uh, provision. And we want to pray for them as well. And, and, and we get those requests from different parts parts of the world. We yeah. want to pray and include uh, those pastors, those missionaries, those evangelists that are out there uh, sowing the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. We want to pray for those who are sick. There are people who tune yeah. in who have uh, uh, a need of healing in their bodies. Would you pray as the Lord leads you, Pastor Jairo? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for those who tune in. It's because they're hungry. It's because they seek truth. It's because they want to partner with, oftentimes in prayer or in finances. And we thank you, Father, for such generous hearts. And for those who are looking to you for healing in their bodies, Father God, we pray in Jesus' name that you would hear their prayer and answer the cry of their hearts. It matters not what their sickness is. You are able to do exceeding abundantly and above what we ask or even think. And so I pray that you would touch them and heal their bodies, whether it be organs that are failing or whether it is bones that are broken, whether, Lord God, it is emotions and, and mental health, whatever the need physically. For your word says, as Peter gave it to us, for by his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. So we thank you that your punishment was not only that which brought to us salvation and the payment for the penalty of our sins, but it also brought with it healing for our bodies. Hallelujah. And so we pray in agreement with them that you would touch them, that you would heal them, that you would release them from any infirmity that has taken a hold of their lives. We rebuke the enemy, oh Lord God, in Jesus' name. We pray also, Father, for those who are in financial straits, Lord, that you would provide, that you would 
open a door of opportunity, giving them gainful employment to provide for themselves and their families, and even to have, as your word says, in abundance to give to those who have need around them and far and wide. In Jesus' name, open doors that cannot be closed, Lord God, regarding Father, their provision. Lord, we pray for protection over lives. There are so many that, oh Lord, tune in or listen that are in situations where there is danger. We pray in Jesus' name that they would not fear as they walk in the valley of the shadow of death, for you are with them. Hallelujah. We pray for pastors and missionaries, evangelists, oh Lord God, teachers of the word that go forth, trusting, oh Lord God, in you to be their provision for their congregations, Lord, for their needs in material structures as well as in spiritual food, that you would protect the life of those who are heralds of the truth, that you would help them, Father, as they sow seed, weeping over lost souls, that they would come back, as your word says, rejoicing with great joy in the harvest of that which they have sown. Bless them, O Lord God. Provide for them. Have, O Lord God, your protection over them day and night. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for answering the call on their lives to go forth in Jesus' name, sowing seed that will bring forth fruit unto righteousness to the glory of your name in ages to come. So we bless you and praise you for your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then, Father, we lift up the United States of America. Yes, God. We pray for your intervention in this nation. We pray for a mighty move of God, for a visitation yes. of your Holy Spirit Hallelujah. once again in this nation. Thank you, Lord, for those revival fires in some of the campuses. Yes. But, Lord, we pray for much more. We pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. But, Lord, we know that our hope is in you and not in man. Amen. So, Father, we pray for those who are in position of influence and authority in this nation, both in education and government and media, that, Lord, they would seek after you, that they would bow their knees Amen. before you, Lord Jesus, acknowledging your lordship and seeking your, yes. your direction, oh God, and your will in Jesus' name. Yes. Have your way in this nation. Revive us, oh God. In Thank you. Father. of Jesus Christ. Save this nation, we pray. Yeah. Amen and amen. amen. Pastor amen. Gyro, thank you so much that this hour has gone so quickly. Yes, it has. We could have had to have more time with you, but I want to thank you uh, for well, being on here. I want to thank you and Bonneville Pentecostal Church for all that you do for missions around the world, and thank you for welcome. all you have done and continue to do for the nation of Ukraine in the yes. midst of all that is happening there. And may God recompense you and your church. And I want to thank you just personally right here for your heart for missions so for all that you continue to do in support of extending God's kingdom around the world in places that are most in need. And you personally go to these nations. And I know you've come many times. You Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. And, you know, I believe you're going to be back there again as soon as Amen. things out a bit there. A lot of work to be done there. But thank you so much. And um, uh, folks, I just want to say, if you want to contribute to our ongoing humanitarian relief efforts there, they, are, they continue on. There are many needs. And uh, you can do that right now by going to our webpage. Uh, there are different uh, means of giving there, or you can write a check to the ministry, uh, and that is Global Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. Please do not uh, hold back. If God speaks to you, be obedient to him. And we thank you in advance for doing that. We're heading to Ukraine in just a matter of days, and uh, we will be having a pastor's retreat. We're taking care of these pastors, their accommodations, their meals, helping them with transportation. These are pastors from the war zones 
Uh, we're going to spend a few days with them, encouraging them, praying with them, praying for them. And we look very much forward to being there. We ask for your prayers. And please, if God speaks to you to do something to help with that retreat, we would certainly appreciate that and um, other needs that we are trying to meet, not only in Ukraine, but in various parts of the world. Pastor Gyro, thank you so much again. You're welcome. If you want to say anything else in closing. Well, I just want to say, Walter, you know, you said, you know, thank you, Pastor Gyro, for your heart of missions. And I think uh, you may know this, maybe not, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, when I was called by God, I was 13 years old, and it was when you and Tony were ministering in Chicago at the Ukrainian Pentecostal Church with Pastor Matviev, and that was back in 1974, the summer, and Tony was preaching, and you were interpreting, so it just comes back to you, cast your bread upon the waters after many days, it'll wow. come back to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Wow. So because of your faithfulness, we continue to help and to uh, encourage you in your ministry back to the people of Ukraine and India and, you know, Nepal and Russia and Armenia and so forth. You folks have been all over the place. Well, I am a product of that kind of faithfulness. So praise God for that. Well, God richly bless you, and Thanks. it is so wonderful to hear testimonies like that, uh, yeah. and um, we're going to uh, have the opportunity. I lost contact with a pastor. I think it was 1975. I was not allowed to go into the Soviet Union. I was blacklisted yeah. uh, after a, a few incidences, and um, I... Um, was not able to go, but so I stayed in Poland. My dad was with me on that trip. He went into Ukraine. I stayed. And, you know, as, as God has it, you know, one door closes, another opens. I ended yes. up preaching at a church in Katowice, Poland, and mm -hmm. I was young and bold. And uh, uh, the, 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 I said to the pastor, I'd like to speak on the uh, baptism and the Holy Spirit. And this was not uh, a Pentecostal church. And, but he, he was very open. He said, yes, please. And so, uh, or, or just said, yes. And so I did. And then I invited people who wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I started praying for them. And God started to uh, fill them with the Holy Spirit. The pastor fell on his knees and asked for prayer too. And God baptized him in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Well, I had never been back to that church, but we will be there. <laughs> the pastor. Amen is now retired. He's 99 years old, but wow. still alive. Uh, uh, the current pastor tells me he looks like he's only 65. <laughs> and, wow. uh, but uh, the joy of the Lord and the, uh, the renewal of God's strength, but it's another testimony. And, um, and God made that just totally revolutionize that church. The church grew to being one of the larger churches in Poland, my understanding. And we will have, he wrote me several times, so we never, I had never had the opportunity to go back there until this journey after Ukraine, we're going to make a stop there. And so a similar, uh, kind of a similar uh, wow. testimony in, 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 in being able to see someone we hadn't seen in a while, but, um, but God is a faithful God. And sometimes uh, you, you, you talked about, and I'm just going to go along just a little bit here, but you talked about Jesus walking 25 miles. That's yes. probably a good day's journey. It would take me yes. probably a day to walk 25 miles. And let me tell you that when you walk 25 miles, you're probably hungry and thirsty and tired. You're aching. But you know what? Jesus did not did not look to that that situation with with just saying, well, you know, just I'll, I'll deal with this tomorrow after I get a break here. You know, sometimes the opportunities arise when we're tired and weary and wish we could just find a pillow and uh, and and rest our head for a little bit. But, you know, Jesus was obedient to the Father in whatever he said, whatever he did. He said, what I see the Father do that I do, what I yeah. hear say that I say. And Jesus is obedient to that Father in that very moment of need of this widow. Jesus did not put that off. And, right. and let me tell you, sometimes opportunities to evangelize, 
to speak to someone come in the what you know we would think the worst of our situation where we don't want to do that because we're tired but you know uh, if we're obedient to god in that moment uh, god just does such a beautiful thing and yeah. and so i i'm just amazed and you know i i i never took note of that that long walk to get there yes. Uh, and and so knowing that it just adds that whole additional dimension um, with the situation, dealing with this. And 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 I know you're that type of person. Uh, you work tirelessly at the church and also physical work, and yet you will take time to Amen. do what is important when needed. And God, may God reward you for that, Pastor Gyro. Thank you. Amen. So thank you again. And thank you to all who have tuned in. Please, please share this broadcast. Uh, it's a way of encouraging other people and engaging them in conversation about the things that really matter. Thank you again. God richly bless you. And as I say on this broadcast, don't look at how big your need or problem may appear, but rather look at how much bigger God is than any problem or need. And remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. God richly bless you. Amen.